I wonder if you can guess where I am today. That's right, I am in Pangrave Church and I'm getting the church ready for our remembrance service on Sunday. You can see here we have our poppy wreath which I will lay at the War Memorial in Pangrave Churchyard on Sunday and of course we have lots of poppies uh, on the wreath. I've spoken before about why some people choose to wear a poppy in remembrance of those who died in the wars. We also have our poppies and this was made uh, by East Haven together and there's over a hundred red poppies on the installation on the display and if I come down here you'll see also that we have one white poppy and the single white poppy is to represent uh, not only the, the armed forces but also all the men and women and children who died in the wars. You might also notice that we have some white, uh, some purple poppies as well. Now we've got 11 purple poppies. I wonder if you know what the purple poppies are for. They'll tell you. They are to remember all the animals who died in the war. We also have something else in our display this Sunday um, that's covered in poppies. I wonder if you know what this is. Well, this is our poppy dog, our poppy dale. And did you know that during the First World War, Airedale Terriers, like this one, uh, were used in the war. They were involved in the trenches and they were used to bring messages and medicine. And they would even find wounded soldiers as well. But did you know something else? That these dogs were first trained on the beaches of Barry and Carnoustie and East Haven. You didn't know that? Well, I'm going to tell you the story now of the Airedale Terrier, the poppy dog. Let's hear the story now. If you've ever been to East Haven on your bike for a walk, then I'm sure you would have seen the granite statue, which was made by sculptor Bruce Walker to commemorate the Airedale Terriers and the role they played in the First World War. These lovely four-legged soldiers served a special role in providing vital links in the trenches during the war, performing such duties as carrying important messages and delivering medicine. The Airedales would also identify wounded soldiers and get help for them. So just how did these dogs become so special to the war effort? Well, it all started not too far from East Haven, where the Airedale Monument is situated, when an army officer, Lieutenant Colonel Edwin Richardson, and his wife Blanche lived at Panbride House. Being a dog lover himself, Edwin Richardson had noticed that the Airedales had been used by Russian and German forces with great success. And so the Richardsons purchased a small farm in the area and started training the dogs. The first four dogs to be fully trained were given to the Glasgow Police Force as the UK's first official police dogs and they soon took up their duties. Two of them at Mary Hill Police Station and two at Queen's Park Police Station. Now the Airedales are said to be the king of the terriers. They are magnificent dogs, sturdy and intelligent and determined. They had just the right mix of power and brains and agility. And so it wasn't too long before the British Red Cross asked Richardson to train the dogs, to find wounded soldiers on the battlefields and to carry medical supplies. And so the Airedale Terriers were first trained on the beaches nearby. Barry, Carnoustie and East Haven. Local people helped to train them by acting as casualties, lying on the beach and in amongst the sand dunes. And soon the Airedales would come and find them. The British Army was so impressed with the Airedales that they asked the Richardsons if they could train the Airedale Terriers to carry out these same duties for the war effort. 
Thousands of dogs were then trained up for guard duty, taking messages through the muddy trenches during World War I. They worked too with baskets on their backs which held first aid supplies and transported carrier pigeons on crates on their backs. When the dogs were sent out, if they identified a wounded soldier, they would lift a hat or a cap from the battlefield and run with it back to the dog handler, who would know as soon as he saw the dog with a cap in its mouth that there was an injured soldier needing help, and so the dog would be sent out with the stretcher bearer and would guide him to where the casualty was. One story tells of an incredibly brave dog called Jack, who rescued a whole battalion by getting help when they found themselves cut off in the trenches. Airedales were recruited from all across the UK and some people even donated their pets to help the war effort. Sadly, some Airedales did not survive the war and we remember them by the purple poppies which I showed you earlier. And, do you know, I think it's so perfect, so fitting that there is now this statue in East Haven to commemorate the Airedale Terriers and their contribution to the war effort. East Haven is a perfect place for the statue of the Airedales and their handlers. Since the fathers and grandfathers of some of the people living in East Haven now were the same people who helped in the training of the dogs by hiding on the beach and in the sand dunes for the dogs to find them. And so the villagers in East Haven have welcomed the statue of the Airedales and their handlers by planting poppies on the spot just where the statue is. And so it looks over a beautiful spot overlooking the sea. Aren't those Airedale Terriers amazing dogs? Remember that this year there's no service in town, there's no Remembrance Day service in town as we usually would have. So I've been asking you if you remember to paint a, a, pop, a poppy stone or a poppy, poppy petal and, and, and we've got some here to show you. Uh, some People have already put these at the War Memorial in Panbride Church and I'll, I'll put them back as I'm finished and these will be part of a remembrance service on Sunday uh, and we'll keep them until uh, Armistice Day on the 11th of November. So if you still got to paint your poppy please do that soon and put it either at Newton Church door or the Panbride War Memorial if you can do that safely. You know something else I was thinking? I've just been talking about our poppy dog and sometimes um, people call it a poppy dale uh, but I asked the lady who looks after the dog what his or her name was and you know she told me that the dog doesn't have a name so perhaps you would like to name our poppy dog you can think of an appropriate name and you can send uh, your ideas to me you can maybe ask your teacher to send it to me or maybe your mum, dad or whoever looks after you and I'll let you know next time what the dog is called. Until I see you again, stay safe. God bless. <laughs>